there are some fairly senior police officers in Lancashire Police that should be seeking alternative employment. My name is Peter Blexley. I'm a former Scotland Yard detective and now I'm an author and broadcaster. Every year between 200 and 300,000 people go missing and are reported missing to the police. So that can be up to 800 cases a day. Many of those people return home very quickly. Some, of course, simply never return. So there's always a balance to be struck in the resources that the police apply to one of these cases and the breadth and depth of the investigation. With regards to Nicola Bully, I would have expected the police very early on to establish that her going missing was completely out of character, was therefore extremely unusual and should have been treated as the most serious type of missing person case. I was surprised when I watched early footage from St Michael's on Wire that the bench that we'd been told Nicola had been sitting on and where her phone had been found wasn't actually sealed off like you would expect a more traditional crime scene to be sealed off with barrier tape, do not cross, crime scene and all of that. I think the police should have dealt with that bench as a potential crime scene right from the very off. At the absolute minimum, it should have been secured, should have had cordons placed around it. In fact, perhaps they should have considered removing it in its entirety. After only a matter of days, Lancashire Police were saying quite clearly that they felt there was no third party involvement. So nobody else was involved in Nicola's disappearance. And they also said very clearly that it was their working hypothesis or their theory that she had gone into the water. In more recent times, They've been saying, we're keeping an open mind. But very early on, very clearly, they said no third party and she's in the water. Now, we are not privy to everything that the police know. And they, obviously, have some form of evidence that has led them to this conclusion. It is time for Lancashire Police to make us aware of what that evidence is that made them so clearly come to those conclusions at a very early stage. The police, to me, looked fairly confident when they said, Nicola has not left this location. And they said they checked all working CCTV people's doorbell footage and the like. Although they did clearly state there was no CCTV covering the exit that led to Garstang Lane and the A586. We now know, of course, that they've written to the owners of some 700 vehicles that passed along Garstang Lane to see if the owners of those cars have got any dash cam footage or anything else that might assist the police inquiry. With the explosion in interest in true crime in recent years, we've all become armchair detectives, every single one of us. I don't deny anybody the, the chance to speculate and to have their own thoughts and theories, of, of course not. What is particularly unhelpful though, is when armchair detectives with absolutely no experience 
in investigating crime, having never solved anything, having never arrested anybody, take it upon themselves to jump in their car, get on a train, go to the scene of the crime and start poking their noses around. And of course, in this situation, we'd seen that it got to such a state that Lancashire Police had to get a dispersal order so that they could literally remove people who were doing exactly that, and if need be, arrest them. In this situation, Nicola, a mum of two young daughters, whom she clearly adored, a partner, a much-loved friend, a neighbour, a woman who simply would not disappear of her own volition, who wouldn't abandon her very enjoyable life and leave that all behind her. I think the family and friends probably got it right and time will tell as to whether the police did or not. I hope, although my hope is rapidly fading, that at some point Nicola returns alive and well. The longer this goes on, tragically, the less likely I think that is going to be.